You've likely heard recently how the metaverse will usher in a new era of digital connectivity, virtual reality, VR, experiences, and e-commerce. Tech companies are betting big on it. Microsoft's massive $68.7 billion acquisition of game-developing giant Activision Blizzard reflected the company's desire to bolster its position in the interactive entertainment space. Welcome back to Tech Trends for All. Before we proceed, kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated when we release new videos. Without further delay, let's dive in. The Metaverse is an integrated network of 3D virtual worlds. These worlds are accessed through a virtual reality headset. Users navigate the metaverse using their eye movements, feedback controllers, or voice commands. The headset immerses the user, stimulating what is known as presence, which is created by generating the physical sensation of actually being there. The metaverse is the future of the internet, or is it a video game? Or maybe it's a deep uncomfortable, worse version of Zoom. It's hard to say to a certain extent, talking about what the metaverse means is a bit like having a discussion about what the internet means in the 1970s. The building blocks of a new form of communication were in the process of being filmed, but no one could really know what the reality would look like. So while it is true at the time that the internet was coming, not every idea of what it would look like is true. On the other hand, there's also a lot of market hype wrapped up in this idea of the metaverse. Facebook in particular is in an especially vulnerable place after Apple's move to limit and tracking hit the company's bottom line. It's impossible to separate Facebook's vision of the future, where everyone has a digital wardrobe to swipe through from the fact that Facebook really wants to make money selling virtual clothes. What does metaverse mean? To help you get a sense of how vague and complex a term the metaverse can be, Here's an exercise to try mentally replace the phrase the metaverse in a sentence with cyberspace 90% of the time. The meanings won't substantially change. That's because the term doesn't really refer to any one specific type of technology, but rather a broad shift in how we interact with technology. And it's entirely possible that the term itself will eventually become as antiquated even as the specific technology it once described becomes commonplace. Broadly speaking, the technologies that make up the metaverse can include virtual reality, characterized by persistent virtual worlds that continue to exist even when you're not playing, as well as augmented reality that combined aspects of the digital and physical worlds. However, it doesn't require that those spaces be exclusively accessed via VR or AR. A virtual world mic aspects of Fortnite that can be accessed through PC, game consoles, and even phones could be metaversal. It also translates to a digital economy where users can create, buy, and sell goods, and in the more idealistic vision of the metaverse. It's inoperable, allowing you to take virtual items like clothes or cars from one platform to another. In the real world, you can buy a shirt from the mall and then wear it to a movie theater. Right now, most platforms have virtual identities, avatars, or inventories that are tied to just one platform. But a metaverse might allow you to create a persona that you can take everywhere as easily as you can copy your profile picture from one social network to another. It's difficult to parse what all this means, because when you hear descriptions like those above and understandable responses, wait, doesn't that exist already? World of Warcraft, for example, is a persistent virtual world where players can buy and sell goods. On the other hand, just as it would be accurate to say that Google builds parts of the internet from physical data centers to security layers, it's similarly accurate to say that Fortnite creator Epic Game is building parts of the metaverse, and it isn't the only company doing so. Some of that work will be done by tech giants like Microsoft and Facebook, the latter of which recently rebranded to Meta to reflect this work. Though we're still not quite used to the name, many other assorted companies, including NVIDIA, Unity, Roblox, and even Snap are all working on building the infrastructure that might become the metaverse. It is at this point that most discussions of what the metaverse entails start to stall. We have a vague sense of what things currently exist that we could kind of call the metaverse and we know which companies are invested in the idea, but we still don't know what it is. Facebook, sorry, meta, still not getting it thinks it will include fake houses you can invite all your friends to hang out in. Microsoft seems to think it could involve virtual meeting rooms to train new hires or chat with your remote co-workers. The pitches for these visions of the future range from optimistic to outright fan fiction. At one point, during Meadow's presentation of the metaverse, the company showed a scenario in which a young woman is sitting on her couch scrolling through Instagram when she sees a video a friend posted of a concert that's happening halfway across the world. 
The video then cuts to the concert, where the woman appears in an Avenger-style hologram. She's able to make eye contact with her friend who is physically there. They're both able to hear the concert, and they can see floating text hovering above the stage. This seems cool, but it's not really advertising a real product or even a possible future one. In fact, it brings us to the biggest problem with the metaverse. Why does the metaverse involve holograms? When the internet first arrived, it started with a series of technological innovations like the ability to let computers talk to each other over great distances or the ability to hyperlink from one web page to another. These technical features were the building blocks that were then used to make the abstract structures we know the internet for websites, apps, social networks, and everything else that relies on those core elements. And that's the same nothing of the convergence of the interface innovations that aren't strictly part of the internet, but are still necessary to make it work such as displays, keyboards, mice, and touchscreens. With the metaverse, there are some new building blocks in place, like the ability to host hundreds of people in a single instance of a server. Ideally, future versions of a metaverse will be able to handle 1000s or even millions of people at once, or motion tracking tools that can distinguish where a person is looking and where their hands are. These new technologies can be very exciting and feel futuristic. What's the metaverse like right now? The paradox of defining the metaverse is that in order for it to be the future, you have to define a way to present we already have MMO, that are essentially entire virtual worlds digital concerts, video calls with people from all over the world, online avatars and commerce platforms. So in order to sell these things as a new vision of the world, there has to be some element of it. That's new. Spend enough time having discussions about the metaverse, and inevitably, someone will reference fictional stories like Snow Crash the 1992 novel that coined the term metaverse or Ready Player One which depicts a VR world where everyone works, plays and shops, combined with the general pop culture idea of holograms and heads-up displays basically anything Iron Man has used in his last 10 movies. These stories serve as an imaginative reference point for what the metaverse, a metaverse that tech companies could actually sell as something new could look like. So guys, let me know down in the comment section below. Do you think metaverse is going to be the future of the internet? For more interesting content, Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.